Hello everyone, welcome back to Formula 1. Today, we're going back to the Formula 1 series and starting something new, starting something fresh. Our Road to Red Bull series. We'll be joining the team Toro Rosso for this season and trying to make a drive good enough for Toro Rosso. Or sorry, for, <laughs> for Red Bull in the next coming seasons. We'll probably get the drive in 2020, but we will see how it is. So we're currently going to be signing a contract for Toro Rosso. I expect it's 16th for both qualifying and race finish, a second driver, and hard team goals. Well, we'll sign the contract and see where this thing goes. Thank you guys for watching, and hope you guys enjoy this series. Hey, you're here. I'll catch up with you. Sorry, I'm just on my way out, but your workstation's at the back over there. It should be all set up on the network, but let the guys know if it isn't. From there, you can access all the data you need to help us direct development of the car. Get yourself settled, and then head out to practice when you're ready. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Welcome to your new team. Toro Rosso are famed for nurturing promising talent and kick-starting the careers of exciting drivers, from Vettel to Sainz to Ricardo. But they're much more than that. This is a strong team that expects regular points finishes. So we're here at the Red Bull team trailer, our little office area that we have here for race weekends. And we have our teammate PR Gasly right in front of us. So we're going just to, I mean, this is a new place. This is something definitely different being in Toronto, and so we're just looking through, see what we have, we got a, definitely a lot of emails from friends Todd, our engineer, and then Emma, so it looks like we have a pretty good team goal, we have to finish 11th or better in this coming weekend, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to rain at all, so we're just going to go into our practice and uh, see how things go from there. Welcome to Melbourne and the inaugural event of the F1 2019 championship season. The session is starting shortly and there's a real sense of anticipation in the air. A feeling that anything can happen this year and if it does, well this weekend could be the opening chapter to one of the most exciting F1 seasons ever. We open up today's free practice with none other than Anthony Davidson. And we're bound to have viewers out there new to Formula One that have no idea what goes on during a session like this. So could you explain why it's such an integral part of the weekend's efforts? Absolutely, Crofty. Behind every Formula One car is a team of top-tier engineers there to make sure everything is performing as expected. Practice sessions serve as an opportunity for the boffins behind the scenes to gather data from the track testing to help them check for any potential faults and, if required, make minor tweaks to the car's setup, ensuring they're prepared for the big race. From the driver's perspective, practice is often less focused on trying to push for those fast lap times, but instead making sure that the car feels right to drive. And if not, raising that within the team so that any issues can be ironed out as quickly as possible. For me, it's this constant evolution of the cars that makes Formula One one of the most engaging sports in the world. This first race of the season is always quite difficult for us trackside, and for those back at the factory as well, as it's the first time the car has run since winter testing. The more consistent mileage you can get in these sessions, the happier we'll be. So going to the first practice session, the engineer gave us some definitely good words, so we're just going to uh, load in a setup I have currently made for Australia um, via the Haas team, but the setup is really good. It's been treating me well, so we're just going to put that setup on, set the hard compound tires, and go for an installation lap, see how the car drives, like see how it works. Track. Try to take it easy for a couple of laps. So coming out of the garage, um, we're just going to set our engine to lean so we don't really waste engine components and we're actually going to pull over the side of the track and 
test out our practice starts. So we're going to go into neutral. We want to get around about 11,000 revs to 12,000 revs and then go. So the practice starts is really good. The car feels absolutely perfect. So we're going on to our first flying lap of the first practice session of the first Australian Grand Prix of the season. So we actually are first in the feed speed trap at 186.9 miles per hour. The car actually feels really good at this point. It feels a bit stiff through the corners, but we can definitely fix that with arrow and chassis upgrades. We know lockups into turn three. Into turn four, actually feels really good. We do go a bit wide, taking extra curb. The car does feel a bit unsettled in the little kink. We do have another lockup right there. It, the, the hard compound tires are a bit cold, so they're a bit hard to control. So going into the final two quarters, I do lock up going in and almost spin the car and crash it. I decide just to finish the lap and see what we can get. Like adding about five, six seconds under the time that we just kind of lost in the final two corners. So we actually go first fastest with a 120.470. We go back in the uh, garage just after the lap to see what we can improve on and actually run some practice practice sims so we just want to see that time and prove it we want to get the setup ready for practice programs like a uh, track of conversation and tire wear test and fuel wear test and race strategies so I'm gonna go run those programs and I'll see you guys back at qualifying Alright, so we're at qualifying for a one-shot qualifying at the Australian Grand Prix here in Melbourne. But, so we just want to load the setup and put as little feel as possible, so 2.8 laps, just to kind of give us that edge and give it a little bit of extra time, enough enough fuel to get us to back in, to the track and back into the garage after a flying lap. But we go into our flying lap, five red lights. And we start it going down to turn one, currently in 18th place. We do have a nice no lockup. Take it very easy. Don't go wide into the first four turns. Don't have a lockup with that. That's a big lockup zone for us later on, but we do take it very easy. We do run really wide at that section right there. But we just continue. We flow through this fast left right hander pretty easily. This is a fifth gear section and it's really good. We're up into P12 already. P13, we're kind of dropping back a bit uh, from our exits, but our entries are really good. No lockup so far. And we're just kind of flowing through the corners at a good, good speed. So we're going to eighth gear through the section. We want to drop around two gears. I do kind of cut the track right there. It's very fast, very... Uh, we're up into P7 actually really good, so we're right behind the Red Bulls. So we break again. I do have a little bit of lockup, so I have to take that corner wide and be laid on the power. But I go that fifth gear. This little section I'm kind of proud of. This was really, really good. I have a little bit of a lockup, but nothing too major to cost me a bunch of time. But I have to get on the power really late here. Open DRS pretty late. Just kind of hold to hold on to P8, but I finish P10. Excellent lap. We're really pleased. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Bottas, Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. So we actually out-qualify our teammate by 8 places. We out-call by qualify Pierre Gasly by 8 places, which is quite something. So we are better than our rival so far. 
And we get a good chunk of resource points for completing qualifying. And um, pretty excited to go into our first race. Um, hoping actually we get a good start and get be really good into the first corner. But uh, well done. yeah. Very solid results. You're looking good for the race. Let's get into the first race of the season. Excellent job yesterday. We qualified above expectations. Let's go out there and put in a performance. So we're actually going to go for the strategy that is faster. So we're going to go from soft to medium compounds with the switching point at lap 7. Hopefully the tires can hold up for those amount of laps and hopefully they don't die and I have to struggle with tire locking or anything like that. So let's go to the grid and get ready to go. So it's one light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, and it lights out and away we go. I get a really good start over here. I have to squeeze out Raikkonen just so he doesn't have to make moves to the middle of the track. And I go back. I actually make a dive bomb on uh, Magnussen, kind of pushing him out to the track. But I have to take a very wide line here, not be able to turn in. I do hit Magnussen, but I have a really good run on side, so I decide to send it down the inside, locking up a bit. But I just hold on to science. And we get a yellow safety flag and a safety, safety car. car has been and I pass Leclerc, sure <laughs> Albon and Max, thinking this wasn't. So I have to return positions to only Verstappen and Albon. I actually get that place on uh, Leclerc for some reason. But I lock up again going to that section, almost losing it to Leclerc on the safety car. But um, this safety car lasts about two or three laps. And it was um, just, I needed to save the engine, so I turned it down. I tried not locking up a bunch because I wanted to save the tires, but I, there were some points I locked up. But we go down onto lap two. I'm just kind of trying to get heat in my tires in this little kink in the straight right here. And I switch just, let's see what it looks like from a different angle. I hit the wall and I actually lock up both tires. I'm surprised I have no front wing damage, but uh, that was a pretty good scare. My tires just... I don't know what happened. It just kind of gave way. So we're on to the third safety car lap, and I noticed Gasly on my MFD is being a bit slow, and he's actually out of the session. Is out of the race. So the points on Toro Rosso lies on me on this race to maximize the amount of points I can get and try to put us in a good place in the standing. So that puts more pressure on me to finish in a good position for this race. Definitely. It would be P6 already. Um, Leclerc will probably be eat me, so we'll probably be up to P7. But um, on to lap number four. Let's see if the car pulls in. I'm actually getting a good run on Albon, but Leclerc also has a pretty good run on me. Going down to the main straight up to turn one, I actually make up a bunch of time because I'm guessing Verstappen actually has a problem, an engine problem. He's going really slow, holding up Albon. So Albon's going to try to make a move on Verstappen while Leclerc tried to make some move on me. I go around the outside, squeezing my way past Leclerc, and Albon goes around the outside, squeezing his way past Verstappen. So it's now me trying to make up places so I can get past Verstappen. Because that, that's crucial points because... Um, or snap it if he's slow, he can hold up Leclerc and possibly allow me to get P5 in this race. And amazing stuff. So I just keep trying to hound on for snap, and I just can't get close enough to make that move. His straight line speed is really good. I can really make it up in the corners, but I can't seem to catch him on the straight. So Leclerc actually makes a move on for P7 We're approaching the on the window. fifth lap. You'll be on the mediums. And I make a move. I push him out wide, locking him both tires. I'm surprised I get no front wing damage, but. He is, Leclerc is still on me, but he eventually passes me on the straight, and Science actually goes for the move, and Magnuson tries, but I, I stay between, I lock up another tire, and I get right past him. I keep the position, but lose that to Leclerc. So I'm at P7 currently, trying my hardest to keep Science and Magnuson behind, but they actually are really, really fast in the straights. There's nothing I can do. In the corners, I can keep them behind, but in the straights, I cannot. So these two sections are really difficult, so I try to keep Magnuson behind for two or three laps. 
he tries to make a move but doesn't work. I eventually catch him up uh, on the chicane on lap six. I actually have enough run on Verstappen that in this little section that I'm pretty good at in the corner, I actually have DRS that I can overtake him and I go to overtake mode. I go in the inside line for this next turn. I lock up my left hand tire. They actually still make it with no damage, which was pretty good. So on to lap 7, I had previously turned on my ERS to 0, not realizing I never had enough energy for after the pit stop, so I had to save energy. But we make it to the pit line with a second mile per, or one mile per hour um, under 37, which is really good. No penalty needed for us. So we go into the pits. Our team makes a really good stop, but I, I'm slow to react to the lights. But the they did a really good job. 1.7 or 2.786, a uh, six-second pit stop, enough to get me in front of Magnussen, which is crucial because the medium compound tires kind of slow and it's difficult to overtake. So we pit out. We're in P15. We're actually behind Hamilton, which is behind a couple slow cars, so we have to make up traffic. I actually have a lockup right there because the tires are pretty cold at this point, so I have to put more heat into them to not lock up as much, and they're pretty new. So onto lap nine, we go through this um, section, going up to the very fast uh, left-right chicane. Going up here, I notice yellow flags, and Elbon is actually out of this race. He I think he has an engine blow up, uh, another Honda problem, I don't know if this is going to be a recurring thing where Honda just becomes like McLaren where it just doesn't have enough power and it just blows up its reliability is poor but so far the sole, or no it's me and Verstappen but I'm the lead Red Bull car on track in P8 so if my math is right I should be in P7 after the pit stop phase, or P5 after pit stops, and yes I am, I'm actually ahead of Norris, and should I be ahead of Science and Magnuson for the next couple laps, hopefully they don't catch up to me, and hopefully I don't make big enough of a mistake to lose the gap I have, so going on to this lap, I do have a couple lockups, um, five laps, uh, from lap 10 to lap 5, there wasn't a lot of action, so there's nothing to really show, but on lap 15, my tires just can't handle it and it's locking up every single corner so I just try to keep it easy try to save energy for the end of the race and save fuel so it's really difficult really difficult to keep him behind and actually Magnuson is 1.3 seconds behind me so even if I make a huge mistake I can't recover he can capitalize on that and move up a position for Haas because I believe both cars are in the points so I just gotta keep my foot down and try not to make any huge mistakes going into this left uh, left right chicane I'm very fast left right chicane I go a bit wide I miss an upshift so I do lose a bit of time in that chicane which is really crucial at the very end of this race so going into this I actually lock up both wheels for a short amount of time doesn't allow me to get an optimal line Magnuson's gaining he's gaining pretty hard so I'm under pressure at this point I actually lock up my tire and almost spin out. That could have cost me two places and could have cost the team crucial points in this championship. So going up to the line, I just put up all my energy and we actually finished P5 on debut for Toro Rosso. That's impressive. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot a well-earned victory for Mercedes.
So let's review the updated driver's standings. After today's performance, Valtteri Bottas secures the championship lead. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Nico Hülkenberg did an excellent job out on the track today. He played aggressively and knew exactly when to capitalise on openings throughout the race. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. So I'm fifth in the championship with 10 points, and I've got the team up to third in the championship ahead of Haas and ahead of Red Bull. And I actually finished P5, and uh, because of Pierre's DNF, um, he finishes P20, zero points for the team, and so does Albon. But it was a really good performance, finishing or starting from P10 on the grid and finishing P5 with a five-place improvement. Crucial points for the team, and hopefully this puts us in a good place for the rest of the season. This will be shaping to be a really good championship. So, we actually, um, in the rivalry breakdown, we, um, get four points. Pierre gets nothing, so we are actually leading our champ, our, our rival, Pierre, by s five points here. And, um, we get a pretty good R&D. This is really good for development because we need to improve the chassis and arrow. Our power output is amazing. It's just our chassis and arrow. We are a bit heavy in the corners and uh, slow in the straights. We've got to fix that for if we're going to be um, competitive near Spa and um, Suzuka, Suzuki, whatever, in the later races in the European leg of the championship because they have a lot of straights. Looks like one of your rivals has also been invited to a historical event. This could be a good opportunity to play up your rivalry for the press and expand your reputation. So we're going to put our um, development into the weight under tray and the diffuser redesign layout. Uh, hopefully this will improve downforce and help us in the corners a little bit, not, not a lot, but a little bit in this uh, upcoming race. But I really appreciate you guys watching till the very end of this video. Hope you enjoy this series and I hope you look going to look forward to the episodes coming. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Hope you guys have like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys all for watching again. <laughs> this is Road to Red Bull.